when children are removed from their families and placed in foster care. They leave behind everything they have ever known and loved. This results in toxic stress on the developing brain. Child removals in itself are incredibly traumatic. This trauma is especially profound for the extremely young who rely on those they are bonded to for comfort. So why then is the family regulation system, AKA CPS, so quick to obliterate families? Diona Peterson is a grandmother who was unfairly denied custody of her granddaughter. Moreover, Diona's son was never given a fair chance to reunify and was victim of the COVID-19 orphan train. My name is Michelle D. Chan. I am founder and director of California Families Rise, a family rights activist organization. The protest footage in this video was all taken at our actions over the years, holding the family regulation system accountable. This is Diona's story. Hi, my name is Diona Peterson. Uh, my granddaughter was um, placed in foster care in January of 2020. She was removed from my son. Um, she was born, born tox positive, um, placed with my son. And uh, the only stipulations was that um, the baby's mom could see her as often as she wanted. She just could not live with them. And whatever reason they deemed that um, they had to come take her. And um, we all applied um, right away, finished all our classes, did our CPR and first aid, um, started the background check. Everything was completed within a week. Uh, they said we were not eligible for emergency placement um, because I had had a, a domestic violence arrest that no charges were filed. Um, it was reduced to a detain and release. Um, so she was placed with a non-family foster home and she remained there for a year. We fought and fought and fought for a year until we could get the case transferred back down to Sacramento County. It was moved to Amador County where no one lived. Our family didn't live there. Um, we weren't from there. The parents didn't live there. Um, it was an hour away from where we lived. Sacramento County is a large county. I'm not sure why the case was taken to Amador County. And so we just continued to fight until we were able to get it to Sacramento County. During the COVID-19 pandemic, system-impacted parents had trouble accessing the services they needed to reunify. However, in most jurisdictions, this was not taken into consideration during their termination hearings. Diona's son was one of those parents. Had this been any time other than the COVID-19 pandemic, Diona's son would have easily been able to transfer his Medi-Cal benefits into the same county where he was court ordered to complete his services. But instead, Diona's son was left in limbo while his baby girl suffered. And now Diona's family has lost all rights to this baby that they loved and raised since birth. 
So my daughter's case, or my granddaughter's case was placed in Amador County and um, he was, my son was provided services or offered services. And when he went to Amador County to start the services, they were told he was not eligible because his Medi-Cal was in Sacramento County. So when he went down to Sacramento County, they would tell him his services were not available because his case was in Amador County. And this was during COVID. So there was very little resources available for him to do things on his own. So he just struggled. He didn't have any direction. He didn't have any guidance. They didn't tell him what, you know, was available. Did he have to pay for it on his own? You know, what the options were and, you know, beings that places were limited, even the social services were limited their hours of operation. So he was stuck. He didn't know what to do. You know, he had nowhere to go, nowhere to turn to. And it just seemed like, you know, it was, he was just chasing his tail, trying to figure out how to appease them. You know, my granddaughter's also Native American. We reached out to the tribe who's in Missouri and, um, you know, they, they helped the best that they could, but because, you know, the state rules and regulations are different, they were limited as well. Siona was unfairly denied kingship placement. Even though she had a pre-existing relationship and demonstrated bond with the baby, Diona has a good job, a good home, is drug and alcohol free, and she completed the resource family approval process with flying colors. We must ask ourselves where the fairness and justice is when a child can be denied her right to be raised by her own grandmother. So um, when the baby was placed in foster care, she was initially placed with a non-family um, member. Um, we fought to get the case and moved to Sacramento County. She was replaced with a, um, another provider that um, has had two prior DUIs, had a history of domestic violence, and um, also um, had two foster children removed from her care and yet those were all okay. You know, here we are with no convictions and nothing on our record, no driving violations, no nothing to speak of. And yet the child is placed with someone who has, you know, what I consider, you know, we're not, it's not being compared apples to apples. So um, when the baby was placed in foster care, she was initially placed with a non-family um, member. Um, we fought to get the case and moved to Sacramento County. She was replaced with a, um, another provider that um, has had two prior DUIs, had a history of domestic violence, and um, also um, had two foster children removed from her care and yet those were all okay. You know, here we are with no convictions and nothing on our record, no driving violations, no nothing to speak of. And yet the child is placed with someone who has, you know, what I consider, you know, we're not, it's not being compared apples to apples. It's, you know, it's different. Back our children! Give us back our children! Give us back our children! Give us back our children! On 
on November 4th, 2021, Congresswoman Karen Bass introduced groundbreaking legislation, which, if passed into law, will help keep families like Deona's intact. The 21st Century Children and Families Act revises the 1997 requirements to terminate parental rights and would override the California state law that allows agencies to do so after only six months. The bill also bans discrimination and places an emphasis on kinship care and seeks to address the disproportionality in child welfare services. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share this video, and follow us on social media.